uh, read only memory pld programmable logic device and pal actually technically it should be pla and pa okay so these are the topics that we are going to see programmable logic devices pld's proms plas pals and gals positive and mixed logic and we are going to end up with uh, the example design examples of each one of them specifically the three ones the roms plas and the pals okay we already have seen this taxonomy design methodology is basically ssi msi lsi we already have seen this very in the very beginning but let this be a, a sort of a revision over here so the standard components came in different varieties like ssi small scale integration medium scale integration and large scale integration these were actually off the shelf components meaning that uh, these are specific function blocks or ics which can be used uh, as as building blocks basically and so uh, you can build a bigger circuit with it okay so these are the basic universal building blocks and are not nand etc okay then we have the application specific standard parts which we called as uh, target specific application area but not customer example printer controller usb interface etc then we specifically saw in details the asic it is a custom design of ic targeting specific market we have the full custom standard cell gate arrays we have already seen this right example is the ati 3d graphics engine and so on and so forth then we have seen also seen the programmable logic devices can be used for wide a variety of uh, designs example is the field programmable gate array so this is just a refresher of what we have seen till now we have also seen that the pld's specifically started with uh, the prom programmable read or read only memories in back in 1960s then came plas programmable logic arrays 1965 1975 pal gal and then the late, uh, recent entries are cpld's and the fpga we have already seen this in quite details okay this is the and or array structure which i have already introduced long back that with the help of and and or array structure architecture you can actually implement uh, many of the device many of the logic functions okay now technically speaking this prom pal and pla these are all obsolete techniques simply because it is a there in the syllabus for the sake of completeness of the syllabus uh, this becomes an academic issue all right so that is the reason why i am covering this up okay so uh, we already know and array connections or connections and so on and so forth in prom uh, the product term sharing is possible at array fixed at factory or array is programmable for pla both are programmable for pal and gal and array is programmable but or array is fixed so there are variety of uh, devices which are available corresponding to their characteristics this is the symbology please go through this symbology uh, when we whenever we draw circuit diagrams concerning with uh, the programmable logic devices these uh symbols are standards okay for example if there is it's a fixed connection at factory so it will it will be denoted by a black heavy dot if it is a programmable connection with fuse intact in that case it will be it will be denoted by a cross symbol okay this is a simplified representation of the same thing okay where fuse is shown to be intact and whenever up to the connection is broken the fuse is uh, shown to be uh, broken over here so it is a blown fuse okay then you have multiple input uh, and gate which is shown like this pull up resistors are generally not shown okay this is for multiple input or gate similar uh, is the case with here okay so please remember that this actually corresponds to this so this single line indicates that it's a multiple input gate okay so similarly a cross placed inside an and gate also represents all the fuse intact so it, this should be understood okay so what does this actually mean it actually means that all these connections are valid or in the sense all the connections are there so that is the reason why i'm saying a into a bar a uh, ended with a bar ended with b ended with b bar is all equal to 
so this is basically uh, an unprogrammed kind of a device okay then we have the product terms so this product terms are coming all from the and uh, inputs and going to the oring so all these are intact p1 plus p2 and all those things okay so similar is the case over here okay so here whenever we have a pull up all the fuses if they are blown this will be equal to 1 all right similar is the case over here due to pull down all the outputs will be if all the fuses are blown then the output will be equal to 0 what do you actually mean by the fuses we have already seen this kind of uh, fuses in whenever we started with the fpga uh, if you remember that so actual fuses transistor circuits are also used we can use sram based cells basically they are come under the category of volatile and non volatile non volatile means you can uh, it, it can be erased uh, but only with the help of ultraviolet radiation okay then we also have um, electrically erasable uh, fuses then you have something called as universal programming unit which is required to do all this job then you have a specific format uh, which is created by jdec we already already have seen this kind of thing so it's a format which is uh, finalized fixed by jdec and uh, it is called as a fuse map okay now this uh, several programs will generate this kind of fuse map for example abel cupl all these were uh, different languages for sort of uh, say uh, to generate this fuse map this is how the implementation is there so you can see the schematic capture or you can go for hdl in the design tools and the fuse map okay and universal programmer we have also seen such a kind of uh, programming uh, you know implementation being done uh, earlier okay so here what are the front end steps see here carefully block diagram entry coding compilation simulation verification okay and then it comes to synthesis after synthesis you have fitting place plus route and finally the timing very uh, timing verification okay this is more or less a generic uh, flow for all the programmable devices if you concentrate on uh, programmable read only memories look at this over here so basically you have a 2 is to 4 decoder circuit okay and array connections are fixed so you already have this fixed over here at the factory so this is the case for a two input uh gate two input uh, system so you can generate using this fuses you can either blow them or these are all main terms which are available and then depending on whatever you want to program you can uh, either blow these fuses or keep these fuses intact and generate the functions f1 f2 f3 and f4 so it is a two input and we can with the help of this this i can generate four outputs okay so simple plain words i can have four different boolean equations being implemented okay so um, here you can see or array connections they are again programmable and i can have all the outputs so this is actually uh, what we talk about here is this is the um, actual structure two input and gate and then multiple input or gates but symbolically it is shown like this so these two are one and the same so how to interpret that so we say that these are the fixed these are the fixed connections okay and these are of course these are the programmable connections so by simply blowing the fuses out you can generate the logic function that you want so this is called as a product term sharing okay because this product term is shared by all the uh, or gates so how many mint terms are required so generating all of them and then selecting among them is the basic strategy okay so what is the impact of adding another input you have to double the and array this is one uh, drawback sort of let us say as far as peer prom is concerned then mass prom is used normally which is fully programmed one time at the factory generally game cards and all that use this kinds of um, 
implementation this is uh, obsolete what shows the evolution of pld's desire to have programmable and plain so this is a different uh, thing altogether so you have an and array which is also programmable and an or array which is also programmable so this is basically a pla it is symbolically shown like this so that becomes easier for you to draw the schematic again you have the product term sharing possible then we have the pals now here you can see in case of pals we have all the and array which is programmable but the or array is fixed so you will be having only a certain functions which can be generated out of this okay so this does not permit actually the product term sharing okay there are since the inputs to the or gates are fixed it is not possible for us to share this output this main term with this particular uh, or gate okay so this is basically the architecture for pal so as we can easily understand there is no product term sharing now the pal with function sharing all additional uh, inputs can also be had with a small modification like this in this architecture itself okay so you can have feedback like this from the output output taken from the output and then you can have the product term sharing possible with this kind of uh, architecture okay but then additional hardware may be required so this will allow the function sharing or for the additional inputs also this is one simple trick that uh, the architecture uses what are the advantages of pld's they shorten the design time so it amounts to what is called as a rapid prototyping which is very very essential many times uh, then we have uh, rapid design changes so whenever we make a design change modification that can be immediately implemented the real estate of pcb is is reduced that is the size basically reduces so we, it requires lesser space improves reliability since there are fewer interconnects or connections uh, packages are also less and so the reliability improves drastically this is the uh, nomenclature but of course let us not uh, go into this we already have seen this right this is the pal how it is shown generally this is the generic array logic so it can emulate any pal it is reprogrammable uses our non volatile memory cells we already have seen the cpld so i don't need not go for this okay on the other hand we will see concentrate more on designing with this particular pal so if i want to have if i want to design a logic function using a programmable read only memory what should i do now as you can see these three are the inputs and f is the output so naturally depending on these values i can generate so this is basically the truth table okay so the data that can that i can have it's simply a decoder sort of thing so what you can do is you can just have this a b a b and c these are the inputs and then the corresponding uh, rom outputs can be generated so this is nothing but uh, whatever is the address location of this particular a uh, output it is it is generated in that particular fashion so it, this is generally the address only so since we are talking about here uh, f 4 uh, 5 uh, bit in fact in this case 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay uh, i can have 32 such addresses out of that i can use only this much so, so many of the addresses and once one of the addresses is is fed over here i can actually store the value corresponding to the truth table okay and this will generate uh, the corresponding function okay so that is actually we'll see uh, in more details uh, with the design example so example of implementing the same function with from pla and pal so here for example we have an, to implement an inverter not gate or gate and gate on and xor gate okay so we will implement all these 
gates with number one a prom a pla and a pal so you have four different functions here so what you have to do is in the same chip you want to have four different functions corresponding to these four gates so these are the truth tables of these four gates a and b are the inputs f1 corresponds to uh, an inverting gate f2 corresponds to or gate f3 corresponds to nand gate and um, f4 corresponds to the xor gate all right so now i can very easily do it with the uh, programmable read only memory like this so see how it is done just concentrate over here we already have these a b with their inverted forms and these are fixed of course so how do i do it very simple yes anyone so you have 0 0 so corresponding to 0 0 i should have a one over there for the first function it's an inverting remember inverting gate f1 is inverting gate so what i have to do is i have to simply see all the possible combinations are available over here okay m0 m1 m2 and m3 these are actually 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 that's all okay so if i want to implement this f1 i will just make sure that these two gates are the outputs of these these two min terms are ordered together that is m0 and m1 okay and if i do that what do i get f1 as the truth table you can see here directly 1 1 0 0 so it is going to be the connection is going to be maintained over here whereas the fuses are going to be blown over here so 1 1 0 0 it is very easy see like that so please understand this carefully it is i mean it's very very easy if you understand this in a, a graphical format okay so how do you blow the fuses so the fuse map will be generated in this particular fashion so this is the implementation of the basic gates in fact you can in fact have any logic function that you want okay is this clear guys siddesh yes sir all right so you can see this is the fuse map what is address address 0 1 2 3 we have the corresponding uh hex representation a f 7 and 4 so what i have to do is i have to simply put the data at those addresses that's all okay this is the pla implementation of course we will not uh, so these are very simple to understand so these are all simple k maps so what you have you can do is you can simply have this f1 f2 f3 and f4 be created with uh, these kinds of k maps and then these are the product terms p1 p2 p3 p4 okay this is the pla implementation again pla means everything will be programmable and gate as well as or gate so it's up to you so when i say when i have this connection over here it means that it is a bar okay and then when i have this two connections it simply means that it is a bar into b or a bar ended with b here it is a only here it is a ended with b bar okay so all the possible combinations i can create over here and then correspondingly uh, how do i combine them together so here it will be only a bar p2 you have uh, for f2 you have p2 and p3 which we have identified here see f1 is only a bar then p2 and p3 f2 is combination of addition of p2 and p3 so it's addition of it's addition of i mean rather ordering of p2 and p3 see here and so on and so forth so with that 
once you generate these kinds of functions like this in terms of the product terms uh, or the min terms you can have the sum of the products in this particular fashion so you will be getting f1 f2 f3 and f4 implemented so uh, please remember the methodology of design this is pal implementation now pal has got a fixed or plane you only have programmable and Uh, this PLA implementation, except for that, I don't have to. Uh, I mean, there are fixed terms which are available, fixed connections are available for the OR plane. So I have to search for those planes which are connected, uh, for those inputs that which are connected. Then we have something called as a logic conventions, positive logic convention, where signal always active high, that is asserted, bubble or negation indicator to show the complementation. Okay, so this. Positive logic convention is one convention and direct polarity indication. It is actually a mixed logic notation. Suffix so H or L indicates active high or low. Polarity indicator or wedge to indicate the active low. So this also is a very important uh, convention because many times this is not explicitly taught at the lower classes. So this is uh, what I mean. This is the positive logic. So you can see here that bubbled in bubbled output means negation this is the positive logic convention and here you have the direct polarity indication this is called as a wedge all right so there are two types of conventions logic conventions positive logic convention and direct polarity indication so whenever i want to show that it is active low it simply means that it, it is going to have a wedge like this okay most of the times plc that is positive logic convention is used but many times you may find this also somewhere okay they will not go into the details of this because this is simply okay now the interesting thing starts and that is uh, how to design the functions using for example pal implement the following function using pal so function number 1 is a bar b bar or with c bar function 2 is a bar b c bar or with a c a ended with c or with a b bar and so on and so forth there is something called as i also which is input okay All right, and this is what is available to us. Remember, this is a PAL. Okay, so inputs are available like this. You can program here. This is programmable and array, but these are fixed. Okay, so how to? This is the answer to this question. So these functions can be implemented. This is the answer. So you can see here. See, we require F1 also. As one of the inputs here, for example, for F3 and F4, we require F1 also. That also is used here, okay, for F3 and for F4. Okay, A, B, C, and this was another input called as I4. So, all the functions see carefully. How this is implemented? Take a minute or two to understand what exactly is done over here.
All right. Is this clear, guys? Siddesh. Yes, sir. And Sheikh Ahmed. Oh uh, yes, sir. It is little bit confusing. Why is it confusing? Ah, uh, sir, because uh, the lines. Are you able to see the, uh, the the figure correctly? Yes, sir. So just make sure that whatever is, look at these terms. Look at these terms. Output of each AND gate. Look at the output of each AND gate. Okay, basically we are supposed to have ORing of. Let us start with F1, A bar, B bar, or with C, C bar. So we have here A bar. So wherever we have this A bar, which is the line, which is the line over here, this is the line. You see that? Do you see the mouse cursor? Yes, sir. Mouse cursor, you see, no? Yes, sir. Okay, so follow the mouse cursor. Yes, so this is your A bar. Okay. Now this A bar, I am having one of the inputs to your AND gate. So A bar is input to the AND gate. What is the other input? B bar. A bar and B bar. So B bar also has to be there. So where is this B bar? You can see here B bar is here. So here you can see. So A bar and B bar and dead over here. Okay, na? A bar and B bar are ended. Look at this and gate. What was our convention? If you follow this convention. I think this convention, if you follow, see, see this convention. Here it is. We want a bar. This is a bar and b bar ended over here, and show it is shown like this. Okay. Now is it clear, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So going back to this example. Right. So now we have A bar ended with B bar. That is that is what I'll get here at the output of this gate, NAND gate, AND gate. All right. And what do I want? What do I want next? Is C bar. We want a C bar there, or no? So C. So you can see here C bar. All the way here, there it is. Okay, so C bar is available over here, which is the input to the AND gate. But since there is no other uh, signal available, it is going to be itself. Output is going to be itself. So now we are having C bar here, and we are having A bar ended with B bar here. And what is the net output? F1 should be then. That will be A bar B bar. Or with C bar. See that now. Guys. Yes, sir. Now try to decode all the other uh, functions. First of all, copy down these functions. And tell me, once you copy this down in your notebook, and then you can map it or try to figure out how it is done over here. Things will be then easy. So just tell me when you finish the copying. F1, F2, F3, and F4. Take it.
Are you finished? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, now sir. try to match your logic equations in this part. See whether it is correct or not. Verify F1, F2, F3 and F4. Verified? Yes, sir. It's done now. Okay, now? Yes, sir. No confusion? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's no, sir. Take hammer. No confusion, no? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. So, what are the disadvantages of this thing? PAL may have too few inputs to the OR gates. Obviously, because these OR gates we have fixed OR gate. So there will be there may be a few too few inputs to the OR gate. This is one of the disadvantages. Advantages for given internal complexity, a PAL can have larger N and M that is the input and the output. Some PALs have outputs that can be complemented adding the uh, POS just like the SOP sum of product form. We can have the product of some form also. No multi level circuit implementation in uh, ROM without external connection from output to input. So this is an advantage over ROM. Okay, we are yet to see the wrong. PAL has outputs from, from all terms as internal inputs to all and terms, making implementation of multi circuits easier. So, this is an advantage of the PAL. And of course, it is going to be a lot cheaper to manufacture. Then we'll see uh, another example, design example with PLA. Now, what is the advantage of PLA here? What have we seen so far? PLA has both. And array as well as or array programmable. So this should be very easy. So this is the structure. Of uh, a PAL. Okay. So, how do you implement this? Just copy down these equations again, Boolean equations, because later on we are going to verify the design. Tell me when you are finished.
डन सर ओके सो जस्ट हैव लुक एट दिस obviously it is very clear and simple here why because we have programmable and as well as programmable or planes just verify let us take for example f0 f0 is simply a ended with b ended with c okay so we have this first one a ended with b ended with c so this is the term which is available and this is what i want for the f0 that's all so there is only one term which is coming out here second a b c or with a bar b bar so a b c the same term now i am supposed to or it with a bar b bar so a bar is this b bar is this they are ended together this is what i get a bar and b bar now i am supposed to or them together to get f1 are you able to see the pattern here yes sir the thing should be easy right so given a particular uh, problem you can now you are in a position to design using the pal pla the next one will be the rom okay easy yes sir okay what are the advantages a pla can have large n and m permitting implementation of have outputs that can be complemented again you can use the product of sum for what is the disadvantages often the product term count limits the application of pla then the two level multiple input optimization reduces the number of product terms for implementation helping it to fit into a pla so basically uh, technical point of view not only cost point of view it does have a, a disadvantage this product term count actually is the limiting factor for pa now let us see the example with prom that is programmable read only memory so we have 8 by 4 prom okay so n is 3 that is 3 input lines m is 4 that is 4 output lines okay and the output that is to be generated is this Now what is this? How do you interpret this? These are the <laughs> terms, product terms one, five, seven, and you are supposed to add them all together. Are you understanding this? This is another way of showing the Boolean equation. Okay, guys. Yes, yes, sir. Copy this down. F zero, F one, F two, and F. done yes done okay so then we have the fixed and array which is a decoder with three inputs and eight outputs implementing the main terms 
for example something like this so the, we have the address inputs and we have the data outputs okay this is shown to be a 2 to the power n into b that is 2 to the power n inputs and b outputs data outputs so this is how it will be implemented see verify if not that is summation of will mean terms 1 5 and 7 okay so f not is 1 5 and 7 simple understood These are the address inputs and you have the corresponding min terms generated over here. In fact, it's a 3 to 8 decoder. That's all. What about uh, F3, 2, 5 and 7? 2, 5 and 7, which is the easiest part. Okay, just verify all the functions. Okay. Yes, sir. And finally, so now we have seen the design using the three programmable logic devices that is the PAL, PLA, and PROM. Okay, so let us have a comparison. Just go through this table, copy this down if you want. ठीक है, guys. Yes, sir. Have you copied the table down? Yes, sir. So, in general, there are some advantages and disadvantages to using these techniques, uh, these technologies. So, corresponding to your application and your requirement, you can easily uh, go for 
uh, implementing using any one of these. But ultimately, as I said, these devices are already obsolete. So you hardly find uh, them to be using being used in the industry. Okay, industries uh, mostly prefer FPGAs now. Even CPLDs are not used. FPGAs are the ones which are uh, in, in demand. Okay. Uh, now tell me of uh, the progress of your uh, practicals. How much you have been able to do that? Your assignments. How much you have been able to do that? Tell me. Uh, sir, I have tried sir. to use Active VHDL, but Active there were some errors. HDL. Ha. Huh. <clears throat> but it was having some uh, error named as top level uh, errors. Select top level design error. Did you? Did you? I'm just. 